So op six op six can you can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please. Okay, so optics is a branch of physics. That studies studies the behavior of lights. Light and electro magnetic waves. So under optics, we are looking at um the general behavior of light. Okay. We are looking at the general behavior of light and electromagnetic waves. That is what optics is about. When we talk about light, if I ask you what light is, I'm sure a lot of you can give me different um, different view of what light actually is. So let me pick one or two views from you so we could move on. Yeah, but what is light? What is light? Yeah, but... Light is a type, is a form of energy that stimulates us. It's a form of energy. That's the form of sense of vision. Okay. Okay. Um, Lizzie, what will you say about what light is? How do you understand light? What is light? Is Lizzie there? Oh, uh, Amma, how do you understand what is light? Um, sir, please. Light is something produced. It's a form of energy produced as a result of atomic transition, which enhances vision. Okay. So generally, the key notes being talked about here is that Light is the principal means by which we gain knowledge of the world. Without light, we cannot see or appreciate the world. So light is light is the principal means by which We gain knowledge, knowledge of the world. That is one of the reasons why when there is no light, we can't see anything. Okay, so light enables us to see or Enhances vision. Erasy, your hand is up. Yeah. Please, Erezi. can you say that light is is a is an electromagnetic, I think spectrum, which which let me say which is also a form of energy something. So can you use like that to like begin the definition? You see. Optics generally is about the study of light and other electromagnetic waves. When we talk about electromagnetic 
waves. Light, visible light is one of them. EM waves. This visible light, which enhances vision, is one of them. Okay. So you can you can define it as light is part of the electromagnetic wave. Okay. Or light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum, which enables vision. Are you okay? Yes, sir. The key, let's look at characteristics of light. The key characteristics of light is that, yes, it's part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, one is part light, visible light. Visible light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So EM spectrum, or oh, it's part of the electromagnetic waves. And one, one thing that, that is one other characteristic that is so common with the electromagnetic waves is that they all travel, all the waves under the electromagnetic spectrum travel at a speed. They all travel at a speed, a speed of three, three million, okay, a speed of three times 10 to the power eight meter per second. And this is 300 million. 300 million meter per second. Meaning that all the waves classified as EM waves, electromagnetic waves, within one second, they could travel, go through a distance of 300 million. Amazing. Amazing. And this is one of the key characteristics of light. The other, um, the other property or behavior of light is that for light, yes, it's an electromagnetic wave. And all the electromagnetic waves do not require a medium for their propagation. So when, when there is no medium, when there is medium, light can be propagated from one point to another. That is why the sun is in space, but it could still reach the earth because in space, there is no air, but it could still travel from there and then reach the atmosphere. The Earth atmosphere. Please, is that okay? And this, yes. this, these two are key characteristics of electromagnetic waves. Plus, let me take a shot of the attendance and drop it into the group because it's still not encouraging. I saw it was a few for Connie. Oh, okay. I can get them again. So let's just see. Well, so if, I, if you have any question, you can ask, okay? Concerning what I've said so far. Before we continue. Is there here? Hello. Please, the first point that you wrote, is it um, um, one characteristic of light? Of, you see, uh, visible light is, yes, it's part it light. Hey, Sawa, oh, Sarah. <laughs> As in, visible light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And under the electromagnetic, we have a wider Different, different, different waves we are grouping or bringing to, together. 
And that grouping is what we call as the electromagnetic spectrum, under which visible light can be seen or found. And the characteristics that will qualify a particular wave to be considered as an electromagnetic wave is that you must, the wave must travel, go through a distance of, uh, must have a speed of 300 million meters per second. That is one. Then the wave, okay, must be such that it can be propagated. It can be, it can be propagated. Okay, through when there is a medium, it can be propagated. When there is no medium, it can be propagated. In fact, it is for this reason that all the waves are called electromagnetic because they have electrical behavior and magnetic behavior. So all the electromagnetic waves travel at a speed of 300 million meters per second. All the electromagnetic waves can be propagated even when there is no medium. And this, this is a key characteristic of electromagnetic waves. Okay, are you fine? Yes, please. All right, let's look at... So can you like, don't clean that part? Yes, I can't see it from. I, I can't see the visible. I can't see. Uh, visible. It's part of the visible, visible, hey, <laughs> visible light. Sorry, visible light is part of, part of. EM spectrum. EM is electromagnetic spectrum and can be pop can be propagated can be propagated through vacuum meaning can be propagated through vacuum. When meaning there is no um a material medium, or can be propagated when there is no material medium. Let me also or can be propagated propagated when there is no. Let me change the marker. When there is no there is no material medium. And in fact, that gives it the name electromagnetic wave. So types of waves. In fact, we have two main types of waves. We have what we call mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. Okay, types of waves we have mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. Electromag uh, mechanical waves would always require a medium before it is propagated. Meaning for mechanical waves, when there is no medium, it cannot be sent from one point to another. Can you give me an example of a wave which has this behavior? Can somebody tell me an example of a wave which, can, um, which has this kind of behavior that it can, um, it can only be sent from one point to another only when there is a medium? Yes. Can somebody... Help us. Yes, I'm not sure what I'm trying. Okay, go ahead. Um, heat. What? Heat. Heat. Mm. 
heat, 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 heat energy. Heat energy is also electromagnetic. Because look at, the sun produces two, two forms of energy. The sun produces light energy and heat energy. Look at where the sun is, okay? And the sun is an incandescent body. All incandescent bodies produce light when heated, okay? And so when the sun could produce light energy as well as heat energy and still could be propagated from space where there is no air, vacuum to us. Uh -huh. A typical, okay, let, let's continue. A typical example of a wave that will require a medium before it can be propagated is sound wave. Sound wave. For sound wave, when there is no medium, it cannot be propagated. As I speak with you, if there is no air medium, okay, my voice cannot even go through the microphone to be decoded into electrical signals to come to your end and then be decoded by your the, 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 the earpiece of your phone to hear me out. So sound wave requires a medium before it can be propagated from one point to another. So all me all waves, sound wave, okay, water wave, wave on a rope, seismic wave or earthquake wave, all will require a medium before it can be propagated. Please, is that okay? All right, let's go into light properly. Properties of light. Properties of light or characteristics. Light can go through characteristics of light or properties. Light can go through or shows a lot of properties. One, light can be reflected or can go through reflection. Reflected. It can also be refracted. It can be refracted. It can also be diffracted. It can also be interfered. Or, and then the other property it shows is that it can be polarized. We'll look at each one of them we'll, um, as we treat your level. We have to look at reflect, reflection, refraction, and then look at diffract, uh, diffraction. And partly, as we move on, we, we'll also talk about interference. Erezi. Um, sir, please, can you talk, can you say that, can you talk about the, this one? A rectilinear assumption of light, where light travels in a straight line. I will, we will talk about it under reflection. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so light energy shows these properties, can be reflected, 
refracted, diffracted, interfered, and then be polarized. These are the characteristics or properties light bursts. Now let's look at types of sources of light. This one, I want you to do the contribution. Sources of light. What are some of the sources of light we can talk about, okay, in our community? Oh, yes. Let's identify the different sources of light. Yes, can you share something with me? Sources of light. Yes. From what and what can we have light? Sources, where? From this. Up here. Up here. From the sun. From the sun. One from the sun. The sun is one of the sources of light too. Two. Yes, you are doing the contribution. Two. Windmill. Windmill, windmill, windmill. Can you explain why you think the windmill is an example of, it's a source of light? Because I think when the, uh, the blades keep winding and winding, it mm -hmm. converts um, something to rotational energy, then it will produce that. <laughs> Okay, I get you. The windmill doesn't produce light directly. The windmill converts mechanical energy to electric energy. Okay, so the windmill is just like the generator in our homes. It's just like Akosomo Dam. It converts mechanical energy to electrical energy, okay? Isra, your hand was up. Please Sources. firefly. 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 This insect, this in insect that gives out light, illuminates light in the night, okay? More views, firefly. We also have some sea fishes that produce light in the night. Okay, such as um the uh, electric fish. And so we can talk about firefly, the glow worm, worm. Electric, the electric fish. There are fishes, okay, in the sea during the during the um night time, okay, they will be shining, they will be illuminating, producing light. Okay, now we shouldn't also overlook the moon. The moon also reflects, produces light. The moon, ahead. I'm waiting for your contributions. Star. The stars. 
Uh -huh. Lighted bulb, lighted candle. Okay. So here, please, you can't say candle or bulb because you must light them to produce, okay, source of light. Lighted firewood, okay, candle, bulb. These are all sources that produce light. Can we, do we have any? Okay, let's assume you have exhausted them. But you see, in all these examples mentioned, okay, we can group them. We can group them into sources, natural sources that produce light by, their, um, by themselves. Okay, and then sources that actually reflect light. Okay, so if you look at the sun, if you look at firefly, if you look at glow worm, If you look at electric fish, if you look at stars, all these are sources of light, sources that produce the light by themselves. So we call them as luminance, bodies. So luminant bodies actually produce light by themselves. And non-luminant bodies actually reflect light from a source. A typical example is the moon. Sometimes mirror also reflects light from a source. And these are non luminant Or sometimes we say they are either luminant bodies or Luminous bodies, either luminous and non-luminous. If if something illuminates the area, it's it means that the thing is brightening the area. So luminous bodies and non-luminous bodies. Luminous bodies are sources that produce light by themselves. So, sun, blah, 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 glow when stars, okay, it doesn't depend on any other source to produce the source of light. But the moon reflects light from the sun. Okay, so those who have been to the moon before says that on the moon, the surface is the rocks and then the sun, everything there is shiny so that it can always reflect the, the light from the sun. Then we also have what we call fluorescent and incandescent bodies. fluorescent and incandescent bodies. So these are incandescent and fluorescent
incandescent bodies such as the sun okay burning firewood then incandescent bulbs some bulbs actually produce light when heated so when the sun gets it the temperature of the sun goes up very very high about 15 million kelvin then it produces heat as well as the light so incandescent bodies actually produce light when heated an example is the burning firewood the incandescent bulbs the sun or the sun so these bodies produce light when heated example we have the incandescent bulbs the sun burning firewood etc ama is the area please the incandescent bulbs are they the same as the solar panel no you see we it, incandescent bulbs are not popular in the system because Ghana Energy Commission introduced energy saving bulbs but these were the old bulbs, round one bulbs we had. In fact, they were such that when using them, the amount of heat associated with the bulbs, very high. The bulbs were rated 40 watts, 60 watts, and some of them even 100 watts. Now they are used in the poultry farms. So if any of you have, I mean, seen something like that before, round bulbs with tungsten filament. The tungsten filament was something like this. So before it actually works, the tungsten filament has to be heated. Okay. And because of the heat, the heating associated with the filament. That is the more reason why it, ha it had to be taken off the system because it was consuming a lot of energy, 40 watts, 60 watts. And so Ghana Energy Commission um, actually stopped the usage of incandescent bulbs. Amen. Sir, so these bulbs were connected to the, I don't know how to say, the, the people who are doing the electricity or something. like Oh, it was, it was bulb, okay, that was being used in homes. But they, they, they halted its production and import into the country and then introduced the now energy saving bulbs. Look at, I have this bulb. Let me show you. Look at this bulb, very huge. And the power rating of this big bulb, this is 50 watts. Okay, those days we had the incandescent bulb, which was rated 60, 100 watts. And when a bulb is rated 50 watts, in the case of what I just showed you, what it means is that this is power, and power is equal to energy over time. What this 
simply means is that if this bulb is rated 50 watts, it means I have 50 joules of energy over one second. So technically what it means is that the bulb function by converting electrical energy to, to light. That's the function of the bulb. The bulb converts electrical energy to light. So if it is rated 50 watts, what it means is that within one second, 50 joules of electrical energy will be converted to light energy. Within one second, 50, 50 joules of electrical energy must be converted to light energy. So if you have a bulb and it's rated 100 watts, then it means that within one second, 100 joules of electrical energy will be converted to light energy. And so if you are going to buy, the choice is yours. Are you going to buy the one that you consumes okay, greater electrical energy within a short time or lesser? The choice is yours. Please. Class, are you following? Yes. So if your heater, your heater or iron is rated 1,000 watts, it means that within one second, 1,000, the heater, the function of the heater is to convert electrical energy to heat energy, right? So it means that within one second, 1,000 joules, of electrical energy will be converted to heat energy. And so the machine, the device will take more energy within, within a short time. So that is the more reason why Ghana Energy Commission took, banned the importation of the incandescent bulbs and then produce, um, encourage the, 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 uh, the importation of energy saving bulbs. Please, any question? So, Mr. Iria, please, if they give 100 watt bulb and 1,000 watt bulb, and one person use the 100, another person use the 1,000, they'll still produce the same lights within the same days, right? They, they will produce the same? Light within the same days. Mm -hmm. Like that's the question. No. Or 1,000 watt to produce more will be used within more days. The 1,000 watts will consume more electricity. It, it will consume more electrical energy, okay, within one second than the 100 watts bulb. But the 1,000 watts may also brighten up better than the... That, so mm. usually the choice of the power rating depends on the what you want what you want to use it for if it's just your room mm -hmm. if it's just your room you don't have to go for bulb that is rated so much because your room space is so small you don't need my much brightness mm, okay is that okay if it's a bedroom your bedroom the function of the bedroom is for you to rest and sleep you are not going to do reading you are not going to do much reading in there so you don't expect to use bulb that will brighten the bedroom so much so there's no need going for a higher rated bulb okay, okay. Mm -hmm. i have this you see i have this 50 watts bulb in my room because i teach online so i will need much brightness but this if it's just for I mean, sleeping, I won't go for this. <laughs> Do you get it? Yes, please. Mm. And please, sir, please ask questions. Okay, please ask questions. We are starting a new topic. So if you have issues, ask a question. Mm -hmm. Sir, please, there are some certain buildings in the sea. Um, I don't know, like it, when in the, in the sea, in the sea. Um, hey. Yes. No, I don't know. Is it called lighthouse or something? Maybe if a ship is 
Working ah, or something. Okay, what okay. Aha. Uh -huh. The balls they use there, is it incandescent balls? I can't say yes. I can't say no because honestly, I haven't seen such bulbs before. But the idea is that such bulbs must be brightening enough so that ships can see. If you if you look at the MTM post, Vodafone post, there is also a bulb on top of it. Okay. Yes. The, the reason for such bulbs is that because of the height, there must be a bulb which brightens so well so that helicopters and aeroplanes can see that there is something there else, they can crash it. Okay. Is that okay? okay. Yes, please. Thank All right. You. Any more questions? I will see Yaba and go speak before we continue. I saw um, Mr. Dear. Hello. So if you pick a for instance 50 watt bulb, mm -hmm. you pick a hundred watt bulb, the hundred watt bulb is going to be brighter than that of the 50 watt bulb. Or they will have equal brightness. It it depends. You see, I said the energy commission banned this the incandescent bulbs and then introduce uh energy saving bulb i have one kind of bulb rated 18 watts i'm coming it actually depends on the kind of okay bulb is it incandescent these incandescent bulbs we had were not uh, uh, brightening so well. I have an 18 watt bulb which gives enough brightness than 40 watt bulb. But what it means is that this one consumes more electrical energy within a second than this one. Meanwhile, the 18 watts one brightens well. The disadvantage we had with the incandescent bulbs was that because the filament had to be heated before light is produced, okay? Even though it may not produce adequate brightness, but it will consume more energy. So it isn't automatic that because the power rating is so high, it will give you enough brightness. No, it depends on the kind of it. Are you okay? Yes, sir. The, the frozen tubes we have in our homes, the long box are rated 18 watts and 32 watts. The fluorescent, fluorescent tubes. These are still in use because for the fluorescent tubes, they don't need to be heated before it produces light. Its technology is different from the incandescent bulbs. Yet it brightens so well. Okay, so the power rating of a bulb does not mean that, does not necessarily it can be so, it can be otherwise. It does not necessarily mean that it will give adequate brightness. It depends on the nature of the bulb. This time, we even have LEDs. This is an, go, let me show you one. This is an LED, light emitting diode, it composition. This gives adequate brightness. It doesn't necessarily have to be heated before. So it depends on, if I own this for you, <laughs> this is this, okay? Gives different, the brightness of this so high, but interestingly, 
eight power rating, very, very low. So the rating does not indicate necessarily indicate a brightness. It depends on the kind of bulb. Is it incandescent? Okay, Incand incandescent bulbs can be rated so high, yet its brightness will be something small because it has to be heated before it produces light. Eraser, are you okay? Yes, sir. All right. So incandescent um, sources and fluorescent sources of light. An example of fluorescent source is the, is the fluorescent tubes. Okay, they are not supposed to be heated before they produce light. Their technology is different. All right, then if you have exhausted your questions, then let's look at the first property of light. Reflection of light. Today's attendance Plants I'm not so happy. What are you girls doing? Are you tired? Yeah. If you have any information, you can share with me. Are you tired? Yes. <laughs> okay, then tell your parents. <laughs> That you are tired of learning. <laughs> no, I'm not tired of <laughs> So, reflection of light. Reflection is one of the properties of light or characteristics of light. Okay. What do we mean by, or what, what do we mean to say that light can be reflected? Yes. You did, you did part uh, reflection of light in GHS. Uh-huh. Please, if I go ahead and answer those of you who have raised your hands. Mm -hmm. Reflection of light. Um, okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. Reflection of, light. reflection of light is the bouncing back of light to it as it hits a surface. So, is the bouncing back of light ray as it hits? A surface. Yes. Another I saw another hand. Go ahead and make your contribution. Oh, go ahead if you raise your hand. So the bouncing of light rays. The bouncing. Back. Of light rays when it hits a surface is what we are calling as reflection of light. Now, rectilinear propagation of light. Rectilinear propagation of light. Okay, the principle of rectilinear propagation of light indicates that light travels in a straight line. So, if you place something in the path of light, and the thing, okay, the thing 
if the thing is an opaque object, what happens is that ideally we expect the light to continue to move in a straight line. But if this thing, it's as to whether it can continue its motion or otherwise depends on the nature of the thing here. If this boundary or material is a well polished, polished surface, well polished, smooth, well polished surface, then a greater percentage of the light will be reflected. And a, um, a very small percentage of it will be absorbed. Within, so it will be absorbed within the medium. And if the material is an opaque material, the component that is that will be absorbed will not come out. It will be remain within the body. But if the surface is a well-polished surface, okay, greater percentage will be reflected. So the, the amount of reflection of light depends on the nature of the surface. If the surface is a rough one, if the surface is not well polished, but rough, what happens is that when the light hits the surface, the reflection will be scattered. The reflection will be scattered. So you won't see. It will be scattered around, so you won't see that there has been a reflection. Because for reflection to occur, uh, all the bounced off light must move in a part in a particular pattern or manner that would that would combine the brightness for you to see that yes, there is a reflection. When the material is rough, has a rough surface. The reflection would happen all right, but it will be scattered. And if it is being scattered and then thrown away in any way or manner, they will not combine for you to see that there is a reflection. Please, are you okay? Yes, please. Now, when the material is transparent, when the material is transparent, maybe a glass block and light hits the surface. This is what will happen. Part of it will be reflected. Only small percentage of the light will be reflected. But the rest would go through, pass through the material. So when an observer is here, you can see, you can see that there is light coming off or coming out from the material, but the part of the light will not be straight. It will be deviated. Here we said there will be refraction, okay, occurring to the light. So you let's go, let's look at reflection of light very well. Reflection, absolute refle uh, reflection of light actually takes place in mirrors and, and well-polished, smooth surfaces. Before we look at light reflection in mirrors, in fact, a ray of light, let's see, let's understand how to represent a ray of light and rays. So a single ray of light, a ray of light is represented by 
just a bold line with an arrow at the center. So this represents a ray of light. Without the arrow, it's just a line. Without the arrow, it's just a line. So this is a ray of light. If you are indicating a number of them, okay, number of rays, which we call as beam, a beam of light, we have more than one, more than one bold lines with an arrow at the center. And this we call as beam, beam of light or rays. So under optics, this is how to indicate a ray and rays. And so we have, this is parallel beam. Parallel beam of light because the individual rays are moving in a parallel manner. This is beam of light. Then we have this one where we have a number of rays all meeting at a point. Okay. And we call this as the rays are converging. Converging beam of light. And we also have the one coming from a common source and getting dispersed. Here yeah, the rays are coming from this point and then getting diverged. So these are uh, this number of rays interacting in this manner. These are diverging beam of light. Diver uh, diverging beam of light. Please, any question? So these are the, the key concepts we'll be applying in our study of light. So, okay. So, Reflection is the bouncing back of light when it hits a surface, when it hits a surface, okay? But the magnitude of reflection depends on the surface. If the surface is well-polished surface, then we, have, we can have a greater percentage of the incident light being reflected. So reflection actually depends on one, the nature of the material. Is the material glass? Is it solid? Is it liquid? Is it gaseous? If it is solid, then so the extent of reflection depends on one, the nature of the material. With the nature, we are talking about whether it's a solid material. And if it's solid, is it metal? Is it wood? Is it plastic? So the nature of the material
informs the extent of reflection. Then two, the other factor on which reflection depends on is the surface, the nature of the surface of the material. The surface where light actually interacts. How is it like? Is it smooth or rough? If the surface is so smooth, then we expect a greater percentage of the incident light being reflected. If it's rough, then parts will be reflected, and um, but will be the reflection will be scattered. So these are the factors on which reflection of light depends on. On that note, okay, Amma. Hey, please, I want to ask a question. Go hey, ahead. please, a tight balloon, even though it contains gas, but it's a solid, right? Yes, the, the balloon okay. fabric is a solid. No, like when gas is pumped into it and it's tight, it becomes a solid, even though it contains gas. Are you talking about balloon? Yes. Yes, the balloon fabric is a solid. Uh, so, okay. so here, the reference is the balloon fabric. Of course, okay. what is inside is not solid, it's gas. Okay. So types of reflection. We have two main types of reflection. We have one regular 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 or specular reflection and we also have irregular or diffused reflection regular or specular reflection and irregular or diffused reflection What is regular reflection? With regular reflection, we have beam of light We have the beam of light incidenting on a smooth surface. So regular reflection, regular reflection occurs on, on a well polished, well polished or smooth surfaces. So we expect regular reflection to occur on well polished or smooth surfaces. Example, well polished smooth surfaces can be A mirror, a mirror, well polished floor, floor, or let me floors, well polished floors, then. Well polished walls,
and the surface of calm water. Calmed water. So these are these are well smooth and well polished surfaces. So regular reflection actually occurs on those surfaces. And how let me let me take a shot of attendance. Okay, excuse me, let me quickly do that and get back to you. These are the surfaces we are describing as well polished. And this is how regular reflection occurs. So here, the surface must be so, so, so smooth. Smooth surfaces are represented by or denoted by a straight line, whether vertical or horizontal, with these lines, selected lines behind. In fact, under optics, when you draw this, this represents a well-polished surface. So this can be a mirror, can be taken as a mirror. The lines at the back indicate the coated, polished part. You see, a mirror has one side of it polished with silver. A mirror has one side of it polished with silver. If there is no polish, Okay, it's equal as the Louvre blade. <laughs> mirror, so a mirror is just like the Louvre blade. Okay, only that the surface is well smoothened. But the, the Louvre blade is such that if you don't coat one end and light hits it, it can just pass through because it's a transparent body. So the mirror is designed in such a way that the surface is so smooth and then one side of it is coated with silver. Okay, silver is an opaque something so that when light hits it, it cannot pass through. So this is the coated surface. And then this part is where light actually incidents, hits. Okay. So anytime you draw either a vertical or horizontal line, and then you indicate this, all that you are saying is that you have a kind of mirror. This side, this related line represents the coated surface, whereas the other part is a smooth end which receives beam of light. Please, are we okay? Are we fine? Yes. Okay, so with regular reflection, when you incident beam of light, 
beam of light hit it in that regularly pattern, orderly pattern. So we have incident beam. Incident beam. And because the surface is smooth and well polished, it reflects in that manner as incidented. So the reflected beam also moves in that orderly manner. So this gives us the reflected, or this part is the reflected beam. So light rays hit the well-polished smooth surface in that orderly manner and it is reflected in that orderly manner as well. And when such reflections occur, virtual image can be formed. That is why when you visit some offices and the surface of the floor is well polished, you see your image. You see your image on the floor because, because the surface is well polished, Light beam hits it orderly and then reflects in orderly manner, thereby forming a virtual image of whatever is around. Please, are we okay? Yes, please. So this is regular reflection. Irregular reflection. Irregular reflection occurs on surfaces that are rough. So irregular or diffused Reflection. Occurs on rough surfaces. Example. Rough walls. Any rough something, any um, surface that is rough. It can be the ground, okay? The air surface on walls, on walls, okay? The surface of ma bodies around, all materials around, anything, generally anything rough. Now, for, for rough, surfaces it is represented as something like this this indicates that the surface is not smooth or regular it's rough any rough surface so that that logology thing represents the roughness of the surface. Now here, we expect incident light um, rays incidenting on the surface in that orderly manner. So incident beam hitting the surface in that orderly manner. But because the surface is not regular or smooth, each and every ray, yeah, there will be a reflection, all right. This will also produce a reflection. 
this would also produce its own reflection. But the difference here is that, let me add another ray. The difference is that over here, the reflection is scattered in a regular reflection. Incident beam in that orderly manner. Let me add one to one ray to this. And then reflected beam in that orderly manner as. So we have that orderly pattern as the incident beam. But over here, because the surface is rough, light incident on the surface in that orderly manner, but the, the reflection is diffuse, irregular. That is what happens in diffused reflection. Because of this diffuse reflection does not form image. So if you enter into a space and the surface is rough, you will never find an, the image of anything when you look through the surface. But for regular reflection, because the, um, the light incident on the surface and reflects in that orderly manner, there's formation of images. But there's no formation of images in irregular reflection. If you have any question, ask. Okay, Adama. And the question. Agria. Miss Edia. Any question? No, sir. And Mr. Dia, please, what's the meaning of virtual? Virtual image, what does it mean? When you look at yourself in a mirror, the kind of image form is virtual. So one, a virtual image is not formed on a screen. Okay. Yes, one, a virtual image, you see, so you look at yourself in a mirror. When you look at the other, it's as if your image is at the other end, but the moment you move the mirror away, there's no, there's nothing. So images that cannot be formed on a screen is a virtual image. You know, we've started light optics. We'll be talking more about this and so you understand, right? Amma, Amma, your hand was up. Mr. Xavier, please, so for the magnitude of the reflection should be greater. The uh, incident ray should be from a, a high height, right? Come again. For the magnitude of the... The, the reflection. Mm -hmm. The incident ray should be from a high height. Um, I'm saying, I'm asking, but I'm relating it to the Akoso border when they are conducting the electricity, if the water it falls from a high altitude and it hits the termites, which produces the electricity. Is that how is that how it works? For so the incident rate should come from a high altitude in order oh, to not, hit the surface. Not necessary. Okay. Formation of whether it will be reflected or not depends on the nature of the surface. If the surface of interaction 
is so smooth, light will be reflected. That is why the mirror we use is designed in such a way that the surface of interaction is very, very, very smooth. When I'm using the mirror, what I'm doing is that when I when I use them, I see if the screen is a mirror. Race, we see we see images as a result of reflection of light. Okay, that is a good question. Let me explain something. Human beings, we see as a result of reflection. If you are standing here, I'm going to mute yourself. When you want to speak, you then you unmute. Okay. If you if I want if you are standing here before I can see you, okay, the science is that light must be coming from objects around me before I can see objects here. Assuming you are standing here before I can see you, light must incident on you and then reflect into my eyes. So we see as a result of reflection so if there is no light incidenting on you and then reflecting into my eyes i cannot see you that is that is the reason why whenever um there is dark you cannot see because whenever there is dark no light is being reflected from the objects your tv even your laptop or your phone if there is no light you just be sitting there. You can't even see your phone. You just be touching around, isn't it? Go. Well, it means that there is no light, okay, being reflected from your phone into your eyes. Now, if there is light, or if light suddenly comes on, light is incidental from the sources around the bulb onto the phone and then it can also reflect into your eyes and then the nerves will send the received signal to the brain to interpret the information received through the eye. So that is how we see. We see as a result of reflection. So when the surface is so smooth, okay, light reflected from the body hits the surface and a virtual image of whatever reflected the light is formed or real image. Am I okay? Yes, sir, please, another question. Okay. Sir, please, why, why do we find it difficult to see when we like we try to see, when we raise our heads to see the sky, as when the sun is shining, we are not able to see. What's the reason behind it? Um, When you raise your hand, uh, eyes to look at the what? The sun I mean, or the sky. Uh, the you sun. To, simply you fail to see because you have a lot of rays entering your uh the, the, the people of the eye. A lot of rays. You don't if it is exposed to so, so um many rays, it affects how it can it, it coordinates it. Ooh, okay. Thanks. All right. Is there any question? So, irregular reflection does not form images. But the advantage we derive from irregular reflection is that the source of light the, the, the main source of light on the surface of the earth is from the sun. Okay. Now, on the surface of the earth, the, the nature of the surface is irregular. We have sand. We have buildings. We have stones. We have trees. We have a queer doma. We have mysteria. We have a lazy. <laughs> we have all manner of people and then items on the surface of the earth. We have water, 
we have buildings. And so the surface of the earth is irregular. So when the light from the sun hits the surface, it is thrown in that disorderly manner. And so wherever you are, you can receive reflected light from the sun. And then you can also receive the associated heat energy coming from it. So that is the reason why when you are hiding under a canopy, the canopy of a tree or trees or whatever, light comes there because the surface of the earth is irregular. And so when the light beam from the sun hits the surface, it is thrown anyhow. And so wherever you find yourself, you can experience the light rays from the sun. So that is a major advantage. How um, the, the irregular, okay, kind of dispersion or reflection of uh, light from the sun enables viewing and then the reception of heat energy from the sun. So it isn't a, a, a disadvantage, no. Uh, irregular reflection enables us to see and obtain experience heat energy from the sun. Ishra, I'm sure you have a question. Ishra, ask. Please, I don't. I'm a, an equiadoma. I'm sure you have a question. You don't. Okay. Then let's look at laws of reflection. Laws of reflection. We have two main laws of reflection. And this these two main laws apply when the surface is rough or smooth. No matter the situation, the law works out. Let's have a smooth surface. Isra Kwahin. Isra, are you here? Isra is off. Please, I'm here. No, Isra Akwahin. Not Isra Bar. So this is a, a, a well-polished, smooth surface. Smooth surface here. Meaning this is the coated end. A normal, let's draw a normal. And the normal is always an imaginary line which is perpendicular to the surface of interaction. Okay, the normal is a perpendicular line. It's an, um, it's an imaginary line. It isn't actually there. An imaginary line which is always perpendicular to the surface. Okay, so we create the normal, and the normal must always be. It should make an angle of 90 degrees with the surface. We draw it for a reason which you understand later. So once we have a normal to the mirror, when we, we are going to incident light onto the mirror, So this is the 
incident light or ray. The surface is smooth, so we expect a, a, a greater reflection of the incident light. So we have, and the incident ray and then the reflected ray acts at the same point. Actually, the incident produces a reflection, okay? So when the light interacts with the surface, because the surface is well polished, there will be reflection. The first law indicates that one, the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal all are the are the point of incident there's a point of incident all at the point of incidence acts at the same plane. So the incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal, all at the point of incident, all act at the same plane. Or place. Then two. Whenever you measure the angle of incidence and the angle of incidence and then the angle of this is the reflected ray. So angle of incidence is measured from the normal. Angle of reflection is also measured from the normal. The reason for which we, we need to have the normal because whenever we are to measure angle of incidence I and angle of reflection R, we take it, we take our measurement from the normal. So the angle of incidence is always equal to or yes is the same as equal to the angle of reflection so mathematically we are saying that i is equal to R. These are the two main laws of reflection. Now, this law holds whether the surface is smooth or the surface is rough. Or whether the surface is flat or curvy. If we have a rough surface, if we have a rough surface, if this is an incident ray, it means we need to have a line perpendicular to this surface which we will call as the normal. So we draw our normal. 
it will matter the surface. So what, how you do it is this. You choose a point and you create maybe a line because you are going to draw this using a protractor. You put the, um, the baseline of the protractor here and you indicate the 90 degrees part. Here's a normal. So, there you indicate the angle of incidence and its reflection must be the same as the angle of incidence. So no matter the surface, these two laws, okay, these two laws, okay, are obeyed. The incidence ray, the reflected ray, and then the normal acts at the same place. And then angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. So whether you have a curvy surface, you create a point, draw a normal, and when you incident a ray, it must reflect and it must obey the law of reflection. So the law of reflection applies to all nature or all manner of surfaces, whether smooth or heavy. Any question? Any question? No question. Okay. The next thing to look at, we'll look at, um, Reflection of light in plain mirrors. Reflection of light in plain mirrors. Or discuss, let's, before we look at reflection of light in plain mirrors, let us look at characteristics of images formed by a plain mirror. because we have about less than 15 minutes to, to end. Characteristics of images formed by a plain mirror. When you look at yourself in a mirror, how do you see your image? of images. Uh -huh, Amma. Sir, please, the, the image form and the real object are of the same length. Okay. So, Amma is saying that now, when we talk about Okay, yeah, but I'm coming. When we talk about a plain mirror, it is that mirror with that flat surface. Okay, flat, smooth surface and one end coated. So am I saying when you look at yourself in a plain mirror, the image size and height is the same as the object size. So one image size is the same as object size. That's one. Yaba two. 
image is laterally inverted. The image is laterally inverted. Yeah, but I don't understand. Though. Explain to me. What do you mean by lateral inversion? Um, your left becomes your right, so your right becomes your left. Okay. So, Yaba is saying that image is laterally inverted, meaning that when you, you look into the mirror, your left is your right, and your right side is your left. When you visit the saloon, the barbering saloon, and then you look at the barber through the mirror, you always see the barber as if he's shaving with his left hand. Meanwhile, you tend to look at him and he's a right-handed barber. I don't know if you've made that observation. Have you made that observation? No. Oh, if you go to the barbering saloon, be, be observing. If, if somebody you see through the mirror is eating and you look at him, it always looks as if he's eating with his left hand. Meanwhile, you turn and it's not like that. So, Whenever you visit the barber or the barbering saloon, be observant. It always looks as if the barber sh uh, shaves with the left hand. Meanwhile, when you turn, it's a right-handed barber. Okay, so that is the lateral inversion. There is a turning. It's always as if there is a turn laterally, horizontally, okay? Three, images formed by a plain mirror, characteristics. Three, you've been using mirror so much. So share your experience with me. Amma. So I also have observed that the distance of the, the real object away from the mirror is equal to the distance of the, so, the image. I don't have yeah. to visit. Okay, so am I saying that object distance is always equal to image distance. Yeah, he's She's talking about the distance if there's a mirror and Amma is here. And this is her image. This is the sign from the mirror to the object. Then the distance from the mirror to Amma, the image, is the same. Yes, it's true. I saw another hand up. Please, if you raise your hand, go ahead and give me what you think. Miss Lydia. Hello, Akia. Please, your object distance is always equal image. Equal to the image to the image distance. Have we exhausted the characteristics of images formed in a plain mirror? No, please. Uh -huh. Image form is virtual. Image formed in a plain mirror is always virtual. Yaba, explain. It means that the image cannot be produced. Yeah, but cannot be produced. I don't understand. No. Explain further. Like, it's not real. 
It's not so the image formed in a plain mirror cannot be formed on a screen. So you look at yourself in a mirror. The moment you take the mirror from there, the image is gone. It is not formed on anything. Meanwhile, the image formed when light, the sunlight, or the moonlight incident on you is formed on the ground. Your shadow. Okay? Because your shadow is formed on the ground, that image is real because it is formed on something. But for, uh, for the image formed in a plain mirror, it is never formed on anything. It's as if the image is there. Okay? But you move the mirror, it is not there. And that is characteristics of image, virtual images. Here, if it is not formed on the screen, we say the image is virtual. So virtual images, a kriyaduma, cannot be formed on a screen. Or virtual images is formed as a result of the virtual apparent intersection of reflected rays it will come there. It will come there and so you understand better. Image formed as virtual. Have we adjusted the characteristics of images from? Mm -hmm. Can you say image formed is diminished? No. If it's diminished, then it means the image is reduced. When you compare the image size and the object size, they are not the same. Then you say that it is diminished. Or okay. when the image size is bigger than the object, you say the image is enlarged or magnified. But over here, object size is equal to image size. So magnification okay. is equal to okay. one. Mm -hmm. okay, Mr. Yeah, that, brings me, that brings me to my question. Okay. So, you see the car mirrors, the yes. one on the passenger seat next to the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. They've written on the mirror that objects may seem, may appear closer than they, 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 are, they, they actually they, are. They, they, yes, they, yes. Yes, so that yeah. one is it? Does it? Does the is it, it, it is, a mirror? It is not a plain mirror, it's a different kind of mirror, one of the curved mirrors which we would study. Okay, okay. okay. So, what's the mirror that is used? Okay, a side view mirror for cars, head view mirror for cars, and the, the ones that are used in some supermarkets. If you visit some supermarkets, there is mirror mounted at one end of the corner. It is not plain mirror. They are, uh, we, um, they are convex mirrors. So when after plain mirror, we we'll look at curved mirrors and we'll talk about con concave and convex mirrors. And Ishra would understand properly. Okay. Okay, so Mr. Dia, so in such images, are, are those ones, are those images classified as the managed images? Yes. It can, it can even be, it can either be diminished or enlarged. Thank you very much. Okay. But I have also seen some, some plain mirrors that produce an image which is not as the object to. <laughs> there are some mirrors. When you look at yourself in those mirrors, your head is always bigger than the, your, the, the real situation in the mirror. I don't know if you've seen that before. Yes, please. Yes. They are those kind of 
plain mirrors have a problem, defect, manufacturing defect. So they are not actually, they are not actually real, but there is problem with the manufacturer. As a result of which, it gives you a bigger head than the real situation. But for plain mirrors, the um, objects and image must be the same. Is that okay? All right. I think our time is up. And so this is where I draw the curtains on today's meeting. Thanks for your time, your contribution and everything. We'll continue on Monday. Take care of yourselves and bye-bye. Bye. All right.